You're on. Ray. Yes. Today is uh, July 16th, 2015. Year? Young man. Young man. Young man. Okay. <laughs> Give me some words of wisdom. You know what? Life is not that complicated, but people make it so, okay? If you have your health, you have a family, you got a decent job, then that's happiness in the United States, right? And it's, it's available to everybody. It's how you, how you go about getting it, okay? You, you don't have too much brains to know that if you have a good job, you marry the right woman, you have nice children, you bring them up crop, properly, then that's, that's success, okay? You don't have to be a millionaire. You can have, you can still have life without being a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire, but I've led a wonderful life, okay? And you, uh, give me some more words of wisdom. Words of wisdom? Hmm. Yeah. Words to live by. Well, you know what? You don't need tremendous oh. education. Of course, you do nowadays, but in my time, you didn't need to have college degrees and uh, masters of all that. If you had the if you had the knowledge and the and the personality and the uh, the guts to do something, you did it. Now I never went to college. I went to high school. I did very well in high school, but you know what? I became uh, I started out as a, as a as a young child in Boy Scouts. I was a leader in Boy Scouts. When I went to the Navy, I was a leader in the Navy. I, be, I made a first class in four years, which was unheard of at that time, and I, I offered uh, uh, to go to uh, officer's training school, but I had something working on the outside. So I, I just got a job, uh, and after uh, something fell through that I had, so this other guy and I who got out of the service at the same time, he was in Army and Navy, we started, we started a business, and we did very, very well because he was, at, at that time, he was the, the salesman, and I was the, the, the facilitator. I would be able to motivate people, I would be able to be, train people, and, and we made a hell of a team. And, and we did this for like 20 years, and I finally got burnt out. I said, now what am I gonna do? So uh, I got recruited by a company up in New Jersey. They wanted me to move up there, and I said, who the hell wants to go to New Jersey, for God's sakes? But you know what? It was one of the best moves I've ever made, because uh, when I went up there, I, it took me two times to go up there and decide what I wanted to do, and I had to take a little cut and pay at that time, but I, th I saw the future in it, okay? And guess what? I became, from from that, I became uh, a uh, customer service guy, and then uh, I was uh, sales marketing, and I became vice president of sales marketing, and I became vice president of the company that I was working for, Austin School of Photography, and uh, I became corporate executive vice president of five companies up at the main office. That's not bad for not going to college, right? So I, that's good. Plus, I started working out when I was 1970 to work out to be healthy. And I've been still doing it. I'm 83 years old right now. And I work out f six days a week right now. And I walk three times a week. I work a mile, mile and a half. And I may last till 90, for God's sakes. People say, where are you going to go? But I'm not going, Val. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. What, what, what year were you born? Nin 1931. 1931. It's a my, my father, my father and mother, were, it was a depression. My father was making $12 a week. Can you imagine? What, what, can you imagine living on $12 a week nowadays? Oh, no. In, in what city were you born in? Uh, it was in Shirley, Massachusetts. Shirley, Massachusetts. And guess what? When I got married... I was making forty dollars a week. I was on a, on a GI Bill and in uh, a program for four years, forty dollars a week, and I had a child, a house, and a car. Can you believe that? Can you do that nowadays? No, I don't think so. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, that's that crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So you joined the Navy. Uh, what year was that? Uh, that was in nineteen fifty. Because I graduated from high school. Nineteen fifty, and, and you went down to uh, Norfolk. Is that where you were stationed? No, no. Know what happened? Uh, uh, the Korean War broke out like about a week after I got out of high school, and I was working in a uh, at part time. I was going to work full time in the summertime at a, uh, a, a manufacturing program that they made rope, and I was working in a machine shop. And I said, you know what? 
I'm living in a small town. I'm I'm more motivated than most people. They're gonna they're gonna either work in one of these two factories for the rest of their life and die here. I'm not doing that. I want to do something else. So I said, you know what? I think now that the wars come up, I'm gonna join the navy so I can get a, a some kind of a job, some kind of a job that I can do when I get out. So my friend, my best friend, uh, was working in the next department, and I said, hey Donald, you want to join the navy? He said, what do you mean join the navy? I said. And the Korean War broke out. I said, we're going to get drafted anyway, so we might as well do it right now. He said, what do you want to do? I said, how about we just leave right now? Just tell the bosses we're going to leave. We're going to go join the Navy. And that's what we did. He said, guess what? My my uh, my uh, my uncle is a recruiting officer. He said, I said, well, how do we get there? So let's drive up there and, and join today. So we did. We went to we went to uh, Chicago to go to do, uh, what do you call it, school. Now we 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 were there together. But unfortunately, he became the submarine, and I became an Airedale, which is air, the air part of it. And then uh, I was in uh, Quant Support with Darling, and uh, I didn't like the job I was doing, so I, I, I put in like 15 chits. And the chits were things were like a, it's something to be transferred to. And uh, uh, one day the commander called me and he said, You know what? I'm getting sick and damn tired of your damn chits. He said, I got to respond to every one of them, and I don't want to do that anymore. He said, you want to go to the photo lab? Go to the damn photo lab. I'll give you the thing today to get over there. So I went over there. What was that guy's name? Oh, I don't remember. Are you okay. kidding? That's a long time ago. And so I get over there, and the, the uh, there was a warrant officer there in charge. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I got just transferred over here. He said, we got too many photographers. I don't know what we're going to do with them. I said, you know what? I got a solution to this. We're going to hold a class with all 20 of you guys, and whoever comes out for us is going to go to photography school. Otherwise, the rest of you are going back where you came from because we can't handle all your people. So I said, well, Raymond, what are you going to do, babe? You're going to be the first one out? Yep. I had in my mind. And guess what? Who came out first? Ha <laughs> ha! I did. I went to Jacksonville, Florida for two weeks and then for five months down in Pensacola become a professional photographer. <laughs> An aerial photographer, not only. So that's what I did all in the Navy. Aerial so Navy. after Jacksonville, where'd they send you? Or after Pensacola? I went to a squadron, and then we got a med cruise, went to the Mediterranean, and one day... What was the name of the boat? Uh, the Coral Sea. The Coral Sea. It says Coral Sea, yep. And uh, 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 one day, uh, the, the Admiral, well, I was in the Sixth Fleet, as Admiral Brown was in the Sixth Fleet, and uh, he was, our ship was the master, you know, the, 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 the big ship for the, uh, the command. And... He said, I need a photographer up here. Guess what? They sent me up there, and it was Admiral Brown. He said, hey, can I, I want pictures of this, 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 and that. So I did that, and he liked them. So next time he had a job, he said, look, I'm going into Monaco today. You know what Monaco, what do you call it? I mean, that's big time. Mm -hmm. And no enlisted men were allowed in the casinos and stuff. He said, I want you to follow me around today and take pictures. I've got, I got all kinds of, I've got ambassadors and all kinds of things. He said, I said, but can I get into the casino? Not a problem. He said, I'm an admiral. What do you think? And so <laughs> I took pictures of him, and he went crazy about him. So he said, you know what? He said, could you take me a gung ho picture uh, at the wheel with my stuff on, my hat and all that stuff? I said, sure. What do you want to do? He said, how about like next Wednesday? So I said, okay. So so he called down. He said, send Kanoi up here next Wednesday. He's taking pictures of me. And guess what? He liked it so much, he had 600 dye transfers made. At the time, a dye transfer was the epitome of photography. He made 600 copies of... Do you remember this guy, tape. Admiral's name? Admiral Brown. Admiral yeah. Brown. He's a little guy. He's like about five foot five. He's a little guy. I'm six foot tall. You know, he's a big guy. I, I remember you telling me you took some presidents or generals or people... I took President, uh, President Truman's picture. I took Bo Halsey, Bill, which was a big mm, right. animal back, way back in the back. And I, I, Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> you know Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, the famous, the famous general. Yes. I stayed at his house for God's sakes, because right. when I was take, working for my brother, I worked down there. Yeah. You don't mean Arnold Schwarzenegger. You mean Arnold? I mean, uh, oh, not Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> what am I talking about? You know, what's his name? Uh, uh, was, what's the big general's name? Big general. Was this Schwarzenegger? Korean War. No, not the Korean War. This is later than that. Oh, anyway, so you stayed. So no, what, I said, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's the freaking actor. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, 
when you saw Truman, where did you see him? He came to the Coral at, Sea? At uh, Quonset Point, Rhode Island. Oh, okay. I, I took pictures of him. He came to visit there, and I took pictures of him that day and went into our you know, magazine we had there. So uh, I never talked to him or anything, but I right. took pictures of him. Awesome. So you then, know what? When I was at Quonset Point, guess what who did? I did a crash landing. Crash landing? Let's hear about that. Uh, one day, uh, we went up in a, a two-passenger uh, uh, Grumman Avenger, and we, I was taking pictures and stuff, and all of a sudden, the, I was in contact with the pilot because he, I had to tell him how to fly the plane and everything, believe it or not, go three degrees this way, five degrees this way, so I could take the pictures. And he said, guess what, Ray? He said, uh, I can't get the I can't get the other right landing landing gear down. I said, uh oh, what, what's happening now then? He said, I tell you what, you got two choices. I'm gonna go down with the plane because they're gonna phone the runway. I'm gonna put the wheel up, the other one, and we're gonna last wheels up. He said, oh, he said you got pressure. I said, I got a chest boot and I got a I got a I got a back suit. He said, you want to jump or do you want to go with me? I said, well, you're taking your life in your hands, right? He said, well, I'll I'll go with you. So we crash landed. We made a beautiful landing. It made a sound like a bunch of Budweiser cans because it's all aluminum. And we made a 360 and stopped cold and they came in and rescued us. That was nice. wonderful. Really, really, really. Nice. And nice. then one other traumatic thing, uh, I used to do a lot of helicopter work because helicopters, we had the glass out and everything. And uh, we could take pictures, you know, without the glass uh, interfering, sure. I think. So I, I, I stood up maybe like three times a week I did it. And we used to get extra pay for that, of course. What kind of camera are you using those days? Oh my God, a, D, a, a, a four by five camera, because nothing was small, no digital, right. of course. Right. It was all film camera, four by five, uh, eight by eight, and ten by ten, and ten by uh, eight by twenty. Depends what you're doing. What that brand? Camera. Were those Leicas? Oh, or, uh, no, oh no, 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 no. I don't know what the hell they were. I don't, okay. I don't remember. It's too long ago. Uh, gotcha. So anyway, I'm supposed to go up. This day, to take some reconnaissance pictures of uh, a torpedo run where two ships get, get way miles apart and there's a sled being carried by a destroyer and they fire at it and they want to take pictures as the bombs burst. So the destroyers call, call me mm -hmm. and say, we're firing sh shell number one, three seconds. One, two, three, and I would get ready and take a picture as the, as the thing hit the, hit the as thing. And all of a sudden, my, my guys, uh, my guys uh, says, you know, that those crazy bastards are, are, are shooting, we're at 1,300 feet, uh, 3,000 feet rather, and they're shooting at 12,000 feet. We gotta, we gotta get the hell out of here. So I, I got the hell out of there, and, and that was a good day. But then the next day, I was supposed to go back again, do the same thing, and I said, oh, I don't feel so good today. I said, I feel sick to my stomach, so I told the chief, I said, can you send somebody up today? He said, yeah, I could. He said, uh, uh, just just go back to the barracks and go to, go to bed or go to the infirmary. So I said, okay. And guess what? Plane crashed. Both guys got killed. Man. I'd have been dead. I wouldn't Man. have been here these days. Okay? Wow. I'd be fine. talking to nobody right here. I'd be talking to nobody, right? That's right. But that's it. Okay. Wow. So uh, let's go back to uh, when you were in Massachusetts. How did your parents arrive? In, uh, were they born also in Massachusetts? They were born in Shirley. My grandparents were born in Canada, in Quebec, Canada. They were born in Quebec. Yeah. But both your parents were born in Shirley. Wow. Yeah, both my parents were born in Shirley. As a matter of fact, my great, my grandfather and mother, Kenoya, and grandfather and mother, Duguay, were the first settlements of this little town called Shirley, Massachusetts. They, they were the, the beginning. Okay? Right. And wow. there was a Polish family that was. So what happened eventually was that my town ended up as being Polish on one side of town. You know how used things right. go like that? Right. And yeah, Catholic, I mean, they're all Catholic, but uh, French Canadians on one side of the town. That's yeah. cool. It was a wonderful life because everybody got along. We had all kinds of things together, basketball games and, right. and uh, all kinds of activities. Yeah. So once you so once you were gone, went to the navy, you never returned to Massachusetts. That was no, it. No, I never did. I I, I like uh, when I when I got take I got out in uh, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, mm -hmm. in uh, June of 1950. Is it 50? No, no. Yeah, no, the 54, navy. 54. 54. Yeah, 54. That's the year I got married. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I got out there and I said, you know, I like it here. The weather's wonderful. I said, I don't want to go up to New England. You work in the factory up there. I don't want to go back there. Right. I mean, I like New England, but 
uh, I don't want to work in a factory the rest of my life. So, so Marilee, you met her where? Well, I met her at home. I at home? I went out with her. Oh, sure. I went out with her. Her, her father and mother were my father and mother's best friend. Mm -hmm. So she was like three or four years old, and they used to bring her over when she was like 13. And I thought she was a little waif or something, you know. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't pay attention to her because me and my three boys were we were the haunchos of the town, you know. Right. And, yeah. And, uh, but eventually we got together, you know, naturally. And that, and that got, was that. Yeah, that was that, yeah. She said yes. No, uh, I, I, I was engaged to her and I got disengaged from her and I dated a bunch of other girls that I almost married, two other ones. And I came back when I got out of the Navy in, nine, in June 1954 and I came home for like two months and I had a job with Macintosh, the guy that I finally went in business with. Right. I said, I'm going to go home for a couple of months and I'll be back. And so I went up there, and guess what? I started dating Merle again. I saw her across the street one day. I said, you want to go out? You know? <laughs> so nice. we did. Yeah. And that was that. The rest that was is good. history. And then I went back, back to Norfolk, and about a month later, I said, I was going to, I had five weddings every Saturday. Five friggin' weddings. Because we used to take black and white four by fives. Right. Twelve pictures for 50 bucks. That was ideal, you know. So 